You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. West Hartford. West Hartford. Community television. Community television. Community television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Hello, my name is Catherine Basu. I am the owner of Fit Armadillo and the author of the recently published book, Super Women Secrets Revealed. Successful women talk about fitting in fitness and dare you to join them. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about the book, share some insights from it with you, and also have a special guest that I'm going to interview who spends a lot of time here in West Hartford Center, so she'll be able to share some of her tips and you might even be able to, to meet her at some point to, to get some more of her story. Uh, before I do that, I wanted to share one secret of my own. I've actually been on this set one other time when I was a elementary school student back at Norfolk Elementary School. And all I remember was that it was very, very scary. I remember this black screen being really scared and we talked something about books. So it's, it's actually kind of ironic and I feel a little bit like I'm coming full circle being back. And I'm, I'm very grateful that I was allowed back after what was probably a very lackluster performance. Um, but I, I'm, I'm happy to be here and wanted to share first, like I said, a little bit about the book. Uh, so basically, I started writing this book, or the idea for the book came about four years ago when I started my business, my entrepreneurial journey with my fitness company, Fit Armadillo. And I set out to figure out, based on the advice that my, my poppy had, had given me, which is that you can, you can always learn from a fool. So I wanted to learn the mistakes that other people had made before me and learn also from their successes what made them successful. So I studied lots of entrepreneurs, figure out what makes them so successful. And I kept finding that they would talk about their daily routines and how important their daily routine was. And as I dug deeper, a very big commonality in all those daily routines was the importance of moving more in their daily routine, being active. So I heard uh, Richard Branson was talking about being as much as two times more productive by staying active. Uh, Barbara Corcoran, who you might know uh, of Shark Tank fame, and she's also a really big real estate mogul, she talks about having her personal trainer as her ultimate luxury in life. So she's a very, very wealthy woman, but, but really finds that that's really useful to her, having the trainer. So I, I saw that pattern, and it was a great coincidence for me as someone who was starting a fitness business and wanted to um, you know, benefit people. Uh, found that it was also really exciting because I didn't get into the fitness industry to help people lose 20 pounds the day before the reunion. I wanted to help people find more of those fringe benefits of fitness, so more focus, more energy, more creativity, things that really do benefit an entrepreneur and business owner, but things that we all want, especially that focus and energy when we go and reach for our cup of coffee every day. So that's kind of the story of how the book came about. And I actually, before writing the book, I'd interviewed a bunch of women on my own website. We did video interviews, and then I had some really amazing women that decided, and I'm, I'm cutting this story really, really short, so you can definitely go check out the book for the full version, but they um, were all excited about being part of a book and sharing their stories as part of a book to inspire more people, and so that's kind of the story of the background of the book. So really excited to have you guys check that out. One really fun thing about the book is we try to make it actionable, these tips, so every single woman has a fitness dare that she shares. So these are women that are, like fitness is not their main career, they're not personal trainers, so they're very relatable challenges that you can try out. And you actually don't have to buy the book to get them on social media. I have a Facebook and Instagram page for Super Women's Secrets Revealed, and I share at least one dare once a week, so you can definitely get involved that way as well. Um, and so just to give you more of a feel for the book and have you hear another real story, we have an exclusive interview here for, for West Hartford Community Television with a lovely woman from Fleet Feet. Nancy Stein, and she's joining me today to share her story and her inspirational tips. So thank you for joining thank me, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. It's so exciting. Yeah. Glad to be here. So I've definitely enjoyed going to Fleet Feet growing up, and I'm sure mm -hmm. my first pair of running shoes actually <laughs> probably came from Fleet Feet. So you hear that a lot. Definitely <laughs> been a great, great. A great store, and glad it's, it's still here in West Hartford. Thank so. you. Yes. <laughs> We just celebrated our anniversary, 20-year uh, anniversary, 1997. See, the so store that. was opened. So 
pretty exciting to say in retail that there's a store still for 20 year anniversary. So oh, that was sure. very exciting. No, that is awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Very exciting. So love to learn more about you, Nancy. Sure. Maybe you can share with us what a day in the life of Nancy looks like. Okay. I'm, I'm sure that it's just, mm -hmm. you know, sitting at the oar, having pina coladas yeah. all day. <laughs> at Black Island, yes. boy, I wish. <laughs> Pretty soon, but. <laughs> um, I, I really, I like what you said in the beginning too, is really having that routine and sticking to it. Um, I certainly think your routine changes as, decades of your life change. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly know when my children are young, it looked very different than what it looked like today. And however, I've always made a commitment to myself mm -hmm. somewhere in there. And I, I really think you need to um, sometimes put yourself first and maybe just put something else on the back burner. You know, maybe the vacuuming can wait for a day. But I, I even feel that if you can get 20 minutes in and, and I think sometimes we think of running or working out as you know I don't have two hours of my day I don't have an hour of my day and sometimes you don't um, can you carve out 15 20 minutes um, because that to me is just that alone really can set you up for just a great feeling throughout the day or close out the end of your day depending sure. on what you do um, and really set you up for success for the next day so I think that's really important. At this point, um, I, I have grown children, so um, I absolutely make um, getting up in the morning a priority, whether it's, even if it's just, I mean, obviously, you know, when you live, I live in Old Weathersfield, so um, I certainly know exactly the mileage when I run. And even if it's just a quick two miler, just mm -hmm. to do a quick shakeout, um, I also know the six mile loop if I wanna do that. Um, I'm also a yogi, so having a yoga practice in the morning. Maybe it's not running that day, but doing a yoga practice in the morning. Um, we also, sometimes we, in Hartford, we do a uh, run in the morning. Um, so some, sometimes going up to the riverfront and doing a workout. But I think it's just really important to get up and do something and figure out what that time frame is for you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and is it 30 minutes, 15 minutes, just to do something to get that day started and, and you just feel good all day that you got it in. I know sometimes we always say after work, end of the day, after work, and then things happen. Uh, and then by the time it's nightfall and the day has ended, you're like, oh, I should have just gotten up at six instead of 6.30. Right. So it's really <laughs> getting that in there and scheduling it for yourself. Awesome, I love that. So now, you know, for you, is a general day very similar day to day? Um, How does that relate to your fitness routine? I'd it say in? at this point it's very similar only because I don't have small children anymore. Sure. I think sometimes when you have small children you do have to go by what the children's schedule right. is, whether it's a school event <laughs> or those kind of things. But for me, um, I do longer mileage on my shorter days of work. Mm -hmm. My longer days of work, um, I, do, you know, I, I do longer mileage on my shorter days and I do shorter mileage on my longer days. So I do plan that out. Um, certainly, certainly Sundays are my longer day for mileage for running. But then on my days that I'm not gonna run in the morning, I absolutely know my schedule's pretty set. So those mm -hmm. are the mornings that's, that I will get up for and do. Yes, <laughs> it is. I'm very fortunate. Um, but on those days, I will get up and definitely do a yoga practice. Even if it's awesome. a 15 minute, 20 minute, if I can't devote the whole hour, hour and a half, getting something done in the morning, I think is really important to start your day. And you just feel really good. That's, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to get into that routine. I never was a morning person until oh, I had I'm to teach person. like okay. early morning fitness yes. classes, so I had to be awake. Yes. I'm not a night person, so I know that about myself. So if I wait for the end of the day, yep. I will find an excuse um, or I will be tired and I won't get it done at the end of the day. So I know myself is to really get up. Also, you know, use the weather. Yep. Um, if you can, you know, figure out the weather in New England. <laughs> um, if it's pouring rain, don't say, oh, okay, forget it. I'm not going to run. It's pouring rain. Instead, know it's going to be raining. Have a backup, whether mm -hmm. it's kettlebell workout, whether it's, you know, um, if you're near a gym, you can go to the gym, or if it's just a yoga practice. Don't yep. skip it because it's raining out and you don't want to run in the rain. Yep. Perfect. It's really important. Awesome. So now, have you always had fitness as part of your routine in some way? Or? Yes, I always have. Um, yo running is new for me, so it's really exciting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, running's new for me, three years. Um, my background has been retail for many, many, many years. And as you know, with retail, you usually do have kind of a hectic yep. schedule. So yoga has always been something in my life, um, probably, gee, well over 25 years. 
um, certainly gym, different, different kind of workouts have always been very important to me. And again, I think it's real, it was really important, even when my children were young, and I think it's great to set that example uh, for your children that being healthy, staying active um, is just really important. So I've always had that. And then I started at Flea Feet three years ago, and Steph, the owner, Steph Blosey, the owner of Fleet Feet, was looking for a retail store manager. And my background being retail is how I started. And I said to her, but I don't run. She's like, it's okay. And I kept saying, but I don't run. <laughs> that was August. So October, I started running and have never looked back. And I think it's just very important that almost anybody can run. Mm -hmm. And you really have to make it what you want it to be. So um, at this point, I'm not um, winning. And I'm not going to the Olympics. So um, I think it's just running can be your journey. And that's what I love about it, what you want to make of it. Yeah, I love that. And I, I mean, I love, I have clients all the time that come to me and they say, I'm not a runner, I'm not a runner. And then I'm, I'm a runner. I got started in fitness through running and I grew up, I hated gym class. I remember mm -hmm. just thinking up, how am I going to skip gym class? But I wasn't, you know, I was too much of a goody two shoes to actually follow through with it. But right. I would dream up all these plots of how I'm going to get out of it. But then I found running and and right around actually when Fleet Feet opened. So that's kind of yeah, ironic. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, and, started, and started running. So, and, and a lot of the women in the book talk about that too, where running is what helped them because you can you don't need anything to get started. Mm -mm. Um, and I would, so since you are a new runner, one thing I always tell people that say they're not a runner, they often express that, well, I, I've tried it so many times. And so I always tell just from a scientific background, being a trainer, that you need at least eight weeks, like try it one more time, but give yourself eight weeks to get into it. Do you have any experiences you can share with just how you got started how, that that Absolutely. was able to be something you now love? <laughs> sure. So uh, again, when I started, I said I wasn't a runner. And then I was kind of getting, you get that bug, like we have fun runs on Wednesday nights and I'm watching all these runners. I'm like, I can do that. I think I can do that. <laughs> so one of our coaches, Amy, um, took me out for my first mile. And you would think, we ran a mile, and at the end, I was like, that was a mile? You would think I just won the Olympics. I was screaming, I was so excited, like, I did it, I did a mile, <laughs> so it was super exciting. And I was like, well, if I can do a mile, I could do three. Well, wait, if I can, you know, and that's kind of how it went. Um, but I think it's really important to, to not set, your, set yourself up for failure, but to set yourself up for success. Mm -hmm. So for many people, they may have a, a relative, a friend that runs, and they're like, well, just, just come running with me. I'm doing an easy five. Just come with me. And, and people go out, and they're like, easy five? If you've <laughs> never run, there's no such thing as an easy five. So I think it's really important to either join a group mm. or have somebody that can help you start, whether it's run, walk, do it, you know, do intervals, mm -hmm. um, know your know what's comfortable for you, and do it by time, not distance. So I think a lot of us, when we drive, it's a, it's a mile. Yep. You know, mile in the car doesn't seem like much till you're running. Um, don't do it by that. Do it by time. So if you can run a steady three minutes, walk a minute, another mm -hmm. three, and then you kind of keep building up your running. To me, that's the most important. And for me, it's really helping. We have a lot of people that come into the store that want to start running, and pop, maybe they don't live close enough to join one of our groups. Mm -hmm. We really try to encourage customers on how to start, how to breathe. We hear that a lot. Yep. How to dress. Um, you know, you dress as if it's 20 degrees warmer than it is, because you see that a lot too. People are bundled up, and then you're super uncomfortable. Um, and just really helping people how to get started in running. And I think really having someone that can help you with that, give you some tips, uh, how, to, how to breathe, distance, how to start, and not set yourself up for, well, I'm gonna start running today and I'm gonna go run three miles. If you've never run before, you're not gonna go out and run three miles. Right. So, <laughs> and then you're discouraged and that was miserable and I'm done. So we really try to help people get through that initial. We always say the first mile is the hardest. Yeah, no, that's... And it still is. Yep. Even as an experienced runner, that first mile is your hardest. How do you get through that first mile? And we really celebrate with our new runners their first mile. Like no, we really awesome. make like, you did the mile! <laughs> and if you've never run, that mile feels like, you know, a marathon. Yeah. So it's just really important that somebody's there to help guide you and somebody that understands it. Cool. I think no, that's, that's really important. I definitely agree. I mean, definitely from being a, a personal trainer, I find that the most successful people are the ones that started small and have a support team. So whether that's, yeah. you know, 
you know, coming out for a run group or, mm -hmm. or finding someone in the family that actually will do the walk run intervals versus exactly. the easy five mile yeah. run. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So very cool. Yeah. So now I, I think it sounds like from your background, you started with the yoga and then got into running. I, I feel like you have a good enjoyment of fitness, not mm -hmm. for those fringe benefits, but for, or not, not for those benefits that people usually come to me for, which is like, I want to lose weight in, in the external. Right. So what could you share are some of those benefits, the fringe benefits of fitness that sure. you found have impacted your life? Well, I have to tell you, I think um, my son and I do a lot of hiking. We love to hike. And um, I'm really proud. We just did Acadia National Park this past weekend together. And I was never winded. Um, super exciting. I never question if I can do something, mm -hmm. certainly within my limitations, sure. but whether it's a hike we're going to do, whether it's a full day at Black Island, <laughs> uh, we're going to walk. We do Rodman's Hollow, if you've ever yep. been there. We do a yep. lot of hiking there. And uh, almost a couple of times a month, he and I pick a place to go hike in Connecticut. And I never question the fact that, like, will I be able to do that mileage? Will I be able to do mileage? And, you know, we're not running. We're hiking. Yeah, yeah. But I'm really proud to say that um, I can probably keep up with my son, if not have more stamina than my son. <laughs> and I hope he doesn't see this. <laughs> so I think that alone, and I have a new granddaughter, <clears throat> um, that I just have tons of, I think it's just having tons of energy. Yes. Uh, between working full time, being able to hike, run, do yoga. I still do some gym, gym workouts. Mm -hmm. um, I think my energy level is what really makes me happy. And I never have to wonder, gee, I won't be able to do that. Or, or to see a big set of stairs. Whew, I'm not going to, no problem. Yeah. So that to me, you know, a whole day in New York City. I don't need to really take a break. I'm okay. I can walk the whole city. So that's what makes me feel really good, is to have that stamina. No, I love that. Awesome. Yeah. Great, great benefits there. Absolutely. So if there's someone that's watching this and they're saying, well, this is all great. You know, you're in a great environment with Fleet Feet and sure. I'm a personal trainer and they, they're not really quite buying, you know, this yet that it's, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. What would you, what would be some advice you'd give them to just kind of try to push them over the edge, find the time? Sure. Get going. I think the first thing is never compare yourself. Mm. That to me is the most important. Don't compare yourself to professional athletes that you see. Um, maybe your friends or family that have um, succeeded in whatever fitness realm that they're in. I think do what you can do and be proud of what you can do. But not starting is the biggest detriment to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that even if you can take 10 minutes to try, Power, just fast walking. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be a run. Just go out and say, you know what? I'm going to fast walk for 15 minutes. And then you get back like, well, I did that. That alone, um, I also feel that take a risk and try a class mm. that you've never done. And maybe go with a friend if you, ha you feel you need that support. Or just go it alone. Um, because sometimes that's that. That being nervous and a little bit scared, like, what am I doing in here? But then, you're, then you conquer it or at least smile and laugh through it. Right. <laughs> um, I did aerial yoga. I've never done I have aerial. not done that yet. So. I did that. And this is a girl that I'm a little bit afraid of height. And it, 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 it's intimidating. It was scary at first, but what a great time. Am I a master at it? Absolutely not. But I can say I did it. I enjoyed it. I would do it again. Uh, I actually started yoga because I received a catalog in the mail. Oh, see. <laughs> and this is before the internet. So that's how I went. I uh, never did it my, before, and I decided just to go and try it. So it's really a really self-satisfaction when you can say, I did it, I tried it. And I think exposing yourself to lots of forms of fitness, mm -hmm. whether it's in a class, strength class, running, you're going to find what you love, but you have to kind of test the waters on several things. Sure. Um, you either find a personal trainer that you love or just a program that you like, something that really energized you and motivated you. Mm -hmm. But don't give up. If you take a class or, you know, you go for a run and you have a bad run, which sometimes we do, <laughs> don't say, that's it, I'm done. You know, some days your legs do feel like, cement or bricks. They're like, done, right? <laughs> all right. 
that wasn't one of my better performances, but what happened? You got to run in anyway. Right. So don't be discouraged and keep trying and never compare yourself. I know mm. that sounds really easy to say, but I don't. And I'm really proud to say my daughter always says to me, Mom, you have more confidence than anybody I know. <laughs> because I will jump into the middle of a class or try something or... I went skiing for the first time um, probably five years ago, and I probably hadn't skied in probably 20 years. And I told my kids that I was going skiing, and like, "Have you skied?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> they were more concerned for 20 than years. you were. <laughs> but I'm gone, and I loved it. And I went every Friday night for a month. Oh wow! So, just go, try it. And to me, that's the greatest challenge. Is at the end, like, and I did that. Yep. So don't ever be afraid to start. I love that. And even, I mean, I know for myself, at least, try something that you try before that you hate it and try it again. I felt that way with yoga. It took me maybe five years to try a second yoga class, but now I love it. Mm -hmm. With spinning, I hated it the first time, and mm -hmm. then I became a spin instructor. So it's just, you know, you have to just give it a second chance even, too, sometimes. Yes. I think that's a, I think it's great advice. And, you know, maybe the first time you took it, maybe the, you and the instructor just didn't, right. it just wasn't the kind of instructor for you, and then you took it again. Right. So I absolutely agree with you. I think that's great advice. Awesome. So I wanted to ask if you had a fitness dare, something you can dare the viewers to try, something simple, actionable, but they could, could try out to get going. You know, I, one of my big philosophies is never going to, to bed to say, I wish I, oh, I wish I did that. What's that one thing you want to do? Mm. Do you want to take a yoga class? Do you say, I I really want to do a 5K. Maybe there's a 5K in your neighborhood. Like yeah. I always, maybe you want to do the Hartford Marathon 5K. Maybe you celebrate West Hartford is this weekend. Oh, if you haven't trained, it's going to be a little bit tough now. <laughs> but find that race that, that you really want to try and just try it. Mm -hmm. um, with obviously never running, you're going to have to have some training time for a 5K. Right. Uh, but man, to cross that finish line and get your first medal is so exciting and always like oh i've always wanted to you know i've always wanted to take that class or i want to try a spin class but mm -hmm. i i don't think i can just do it the worst is you slow up your gears and you take a breather in the middle of a class it's okay yep. um and that to me is what i really love is it's okay do, make it your thing tonight whether it's running yoga spin a hit class, whatever it is you're taking, make it yours and know it's okay to say, I just have to pull back for a minute, mm -hmm. regroup and finish. But don't give up. Just keep trying something that you love. But I do have to say there's nothing like crossing a finish line. I mean, I agree. <laughs> it is so exciting. Like, especially for, I can only speak for me being older. Mm -hmm. um, there weren't that many, there's never a finish line in our lives, right? We're never done, like, well, I did that, and that's the thing. You cross that finish line, you're like, and I did yep. it. And, and my children were very proud of me, and I think that to me is the most exciting thing. And forget your time. You know, Don't worry about time at that point. You cross the finish line, yep. and that to me is really exciting. So if that 5K is something you're always thinking you want to do, just do it. Just sign up. Sign up for the race first because then – you will train for it. Ask questions later, right? Yes. Yes. Give yourself at least yes. two months. <laughs> yes, but I really believe in that. Yeah. Just go for it. Something that you really want to do that you say, I can't. I don't have that skill set. Oh, I'm not like my friend that can do that. Go do it. I love it. Are you on social media at all? Yes, I am. What, do you have a, can people tag you if they accept this fitness dare? And, oh, absolutely. And you can share them on. <laughs> my name, absolutely. It's just my name. That's my social media. Sweet. How do you, how do you spell S Nancy and then S-T-A-I-B as in boy, Stein. Okay, we're going to find you. Yeah, <laughs> please do. We'll have to you see. You will see pictures of my granddaughter. <laughs> that you will see on my social media. But yeah, nice. I think it's, and certainly Flea Feet. Um, awesome. We have so many great things on our website too to really help people out. That's what I love. I mean, that's why I wanted to have you come and chat about some tips because you have the great tips. You have a great store yourself, but then Thank just you. Sleep Feet is so amazing. It's not not just the shoe store. Yep. You go there. I mean, shoes are so important. I always tell my clients, I'm sure you guys experience this, a lot mm -hmm. of those people who are not runners, it's because they ran out and ran in like whatever shoes they yep. had around the house mm -hmm. and didn't get fitted. So that's you know, really that your lot. first step is getting the, the shoes. The foundation. Foundation yep. to your running is a good shoe. 
and then you can work your way up from there. For sure. I Definitely. think I, there's someone, they, it's always misquoted as Marilyn Monroe, but that's who I'm thinking of saying this, but they say if, if you give, give a woman the proper shoes, she can, you know, Conquer change the, the world. world. Yes, <laughs> so yes. So it's I definitely agree. true for running. I totally they believe They might in look that. a little different from the shoes you wear when you're conquering the world. Yes, other, exactly. Yes. Other situations. Yes. Another bit dare I have for them, oh, something <laughs> I love doing, um, is on the back of all my race bibs, I dedicate a race to somebody oh, that can't that. be there. I love that. Whether it's somebody in your life that's gone, whether it's somebody that's ill, um, just because it keeps me going. When you think yeah. you want to walk or mm -hmm. quit, or oh my God, this is hard, or it's a, it's a hot day, or it's raining in that race, I always put the name so I can turn it a little bit and see it. So sometimes I dedicate different miles, and then sometimes I just dedicate that race to that person. It's on the back of the bib for me, but I know that as, as, as challenging as this race may be, this hill that I'm looking at, whatever mm -hmm. it might be, they can't be here today, and I can. Yeah, that gratitude. I mean, so for myself, it's interesting that you said that because I just ran a marathon a few two weeks ago, and my grandfather passed away a few days before. Mm. And this was a race I'd been like trying to, you know, my comeback race. I, sure. I had some injuries. And so I just thought about that. I was like, you know, just, you know, maybe he's here with me or just all the people that aren't even able to run for whatever reason mm -hmm. or, you know, and, and that really helped carry me through the race. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that act of physically writing that down. I physically too. write it. And then I can like kind of t tilt the bid and, and just look at their name midway if you have to, you know, yeah. just kind of keeps you going. I really believe in that. that. That's my, I love doing that. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Nancy, for taking thank the time. Thank you. This was awesome. <laughs> I love your here. book. I oh, think it's you. just great. Super motivating. And I love that, like you said, you interviewed real women. So these aren't people that have full-time trainers. And, you yep. know, for those of us that work full-time that have to also fit it in. Yes. And many of them, you know, some of them were athletes before and they had mm -hmm. to figure out how to change their their mm -hmm. career or their you know their lifestyle for that sure but many of them um started their fitness routines when they were in the mix of all you know the mm -hmm. the new lifestyle changes that come with starting a business or something like that so um kind of to, to show people that because i often get as a trainer well you're a trainer you know it's easy for you or you might sure. get you know you're in the shoe store you're inspired by people that are running it's easy for you but really anyone you know can can do that and and get lots of great benefits from fitness it's not just losing weight it's also the added focus energy oh, creativity that you get totally as well. absolutely and i always say it's cheaper than therapy <laughs> yes running is cheaper than therapy it's true <laughs> you know you come up with great ideas for work when you're running decorating ideas i come up with all kinds of things that you know when i get back i'm like oh let me write some of those great ideas yep. down so it's awesome yes well, thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you. It was a and pleasure. Yeah, so just don't forget, guys, you know, we said we talked about support. We talked about um, starting small. Those are some big mm -hmm. themes in the book. Um, but don't forget, you don't ha I mean, I want you to buy the book, but you can also just follow us on social media because you have the dare from Nancy now, and mm -hmm. I also post those fitness dares. So we really want you to, to turn the channel uh, after f finishing up the show, having some actionable things that you're going to go out there and do it, and we can't wait to hear what you do and what you accomplish. Yes. And, and how moving more helps you change your own world and then hopefully the world. Um.